Hi guys, such kind of here and say, I hope you're doing well and enjoying your day so far. One of the major pieces of optimism for the upcoming season was the brand new CDL jerseys that we are about to have. The last two years have been basically the same. This year, the teams, it seems, were allowed by the league to create new jerseys. Again, maybe somewhat similar to the very interesting designs we saw back at the Esports World Cup in August. There are rumours, however, that maybe things are not exactly going to go according to plan with Kenny's vlog the other day basically leaking in all its glory the optic jersey for the new season. Very much enjoyed to your thoughts in the comment section below. The number numbers on the back of the jerseys as well may well represent something too. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. I would greatly appreciate it. Just thought I'd put this up here for the intro because uh, yeah, the COD scene might be cooked. Now, let's talk about a couple of tournaments that went down over the last few days. Nasty and the boys on Surge, they won a $1,200 elite tourney. 04 Abuza Hixie Nasty. One of the teams that, well, we're not really sure where they're going to finish the season. I would expect them to be in that kind of fifth, sixth range, to be honest. I kind of like the roster. I think there's lots of upside there. But um, you know how well they work together and whether the slaying power is going to be there to compete with the best of the best, that is still a bit of a question. But we know that Surge are pretty good at the end of last season. They've shown some good promise early in this game. Speaking of the EMEA region, though, or just Europe in general, really... Let's talk about a 1k European tournament that happened yesterday. So Catalyst put this one on. So honestly, fair play because it's just so dead, unfortunately. <laughs> so many of these tournaments that the league just doesn't want to run. And it takes community members to step in and actually make these things happen, it seems. But um, the grand finals were familiar names. So Steve Vortex, Cobra, Brezzy and Super. That's a very strong looking roster. Brezzy was in the league last year on surge. Cobra played at the World Cup, but um, didn't get an opportunity in this year's league. Although he was linked to Rocker for some time. I think the Rocker links were especially when Linz was expected to stay and then when it was clear that Linz was going to go to Gentile Mates then I think Cobra was less of an option and Super is a player that I honestly expected to be honest by this time to get an opportunity on their Heretics team Rinkle got the chance Super hasn't quite as of yet but in the finals they played Rafi, Eric Boom, F dot and then Afro and um, look we know what Afro said during the offseason he was of course on the Los Angeles Thieves last year and it's not like his year last year went to plan but um, we also know that regardless of what happens at last year, you know, let's say Afro did better last year than he actually did and he wasn't eventually, you know, basically let go from the roster it's not like it would have made much difference because they were dropping Joe Deceives anyway. The reason why I was scrolling up and down there was to find this tweet here that he did back in August where he said, you know, nothing but Kyle my mind this year. So, like, I'm still one of the guys that thinks that Afro has the potential. You know, we've seen it at times. He's just not been able to manifest it over the last couple of years. And I think deservedly, he was out of the Los Angeles Thieves, back down to Chan and just got a previous worth again. But yesterday, he won this tournament and his team pretty much dominated the tournament in the end as well. And Afro played particularly well. So um, there is something I think to be said there for the top players in European challenges. And look, we've seen the likes of Paul X. I mean, Paul X was a good player in the league a couple of years ago. He was out of the league. Now he's back in the league again. And um, you know, I'm sure Afro will have those type of thoughts in mind, especially because nowadays there's quite a few teams with some European representation. Back in the day, it was kind of like you'd have all the North American teams, basically, and then you'd have, like, full UK squads. Nowadays, it's not really like that. The players are mixed in more rosters, and that maybe gives more opportunities. In some sense, more opportunities. In some sense, fewer opportunities. But um, that is what it is. Now, this was another screenshot. So, this was Afro's team, Team Notorious. Afro, Rafi, Eftot, and Eric Boom. They played the Falcons team. Now, obviously, this is... There's Ping involved when the boys are playing out from Saudi... But at the end of the day, this team of Afro, Rafi, F. Don, and Eric Boom is a challenger's team. I mean, you know, these aren't pro-level players. And they slammed them, like, bad. Afro was triple positive. Eric Boom was double positive. Everyone was positive. Everyone negative on the other side. Of course, the full roster is Khalid and um, Roxas as well. So I'm not exactly sure what game attacks they're using here. If this actually... I'm assuming this is the full roster, because why would they not play with it? Even if they didn't, Xnid still 9 in 26. So, um, and a body's, you know, double neg as well. So it's not exactly looking great, is it? And I think this is the theory right now, is that, hang on a second here, we've got Falcons getting fired in European challenges effectively and these guys are going to be a pro league team next season so you know Clay has his work cut out I think that's got to be said but um look time will tell how good these guys do and online with ping isn't always going to be the situation compared to Lan but at the end of the day 
you know, it's not like the online play that they're going to have wherever they're based out of in America for the upcoming season is going to be that much better than this. So that's the debate right now. But Afro's team, they get the W in that one. A couple of other things to mention really from this tournament yesterday. This was the team of Vortex, Cobra, Super and Brezzi that ended up making the finals. They were playing Control as well, which is one of the first times we've really seen that in competitive, to be honest, this year. And then we had Denza, Bantz, Mythics and Harry, another good squad on the other side. We'll just say... Again, the Codcaster has its problems. Like you guys can see here, the streaks. Well, I mean, obviously these guys are all dead, so they're on zero. But, um, and then, you know, the number on the right-hand side, whatever that's trying to show. So, yeah, it doesn't seem like the Codcaster is perfectly aligned again with reality. There was another interesting thing noted yesterday that I believe was talking about on what he's calling the G-slide. Now, um, well, if you guys ever played Black Ops 3, we're back at it again, you'll know what the G-slide was. So at the start of the game. Now, this isn't the G slide as it was known back then. So the G slide in Black Ops 3 was you would run forwards, you would jump, and then as you just landed on the grounds, you would slide and then you would hold your boost jump at the same time. And if you got the timing right, you'd hit the grounds and it would like fly you forward. It would use up all of your jetpack boost because half of it would go on the slide and then half of it would go on a jump forwards. And if you got the timing right, you would just skip off the ground and fly along. Now, eventually Treyarch patched this, but it was a big story really in the first two to three months, I would say, of Black Ops 3 before they got rid of it. Now, after the G slide, the glitch slide was patched people then, you know, realize that you could still kind of do it on ledges. So I used to call this the ledge slide, and many others did as well. I believe here is calling it the G slide. But, you know, the point effectively remains the same, that here in Black Ops 6, the ledge slide is still an effective strategy. So the point that he's making is, you run up here, this is on Babylon, but of course other maps, this is absolutely possible as well. And if you get to the end of a ledge, so you're on top of something and you're just about to fall off, and you slide off it, and then you slide again when you hit the grounds, if you have enough momentum, you can go flying. And um, I think definitely the one that he mentions here is a good example, right? So you slide off the ledge, just like you would back in Black Ops 3, and then you slide when you're on the ground. And of course, in this game, you can slide and then ADS at the same time, right? So, um, look... This isn't a G-slide in the same way that it was in BO3, but this is still quite powerful. I know that many people have already kind of figured out you can do this, but just worthy of note that, um, yeah, ledge sliding, even though it's not a jetpack game, is kind of back. And especially because you can chain the movement now with the Omni movements, it um, does make things pretty powerful. So that's what's happening over there. But let's talk about some of these jerseys, right? So Kenny dropped a vlog the other day. We've seen a Cellium vlog, we've seen various other vlogs. It's been a great time to watch some of the content over the last few days. And they were doing a lot of behind the scenes recording, really, for the media day stuff before they get the season underway for the Optic Boys. Now, this appears to be the jersey. It's not been officially announced yet by Optic. They've not confirmed what it's going to be publicly. We've seen Cloud9 have done that. A couple of other organizations have done that. But um, officially, Optic have not revealed their jersey yet. But in this video, Kenny you know, gives the several minute behind the scenes on exactly what it looks like. So wanted to share a couple of minutes of this when they're recording content for the new season behind the scenes. But also worthy of note, the numbers on the back of the jerseys I thought were kind of interesting because Dashi has number 99. I think Shotzi, which I believe is the year that he was born, which is pretty fire. I think Shotzi has 11. Kenny was 3. And then Prid was number 7. So I think that's kind of nice to have numbers on the back of the jerseys. I like that, certainly from a traditional sports perspective. So um, I like that feature that Optic seemingly are bringing in. But in Twitter, your thoughts in the comments. <laughs> yeah. Nah. <laughs> nah. Alright. So in three. Whoa, I'm already. Bro. Right. <laughs> <laughs> <Right. laughs> oh, yeah. You gotta lock in. That shit's loud too. Right. Uh, to a standstill, like, okay, don't check. Bro, I'm it's telling you, it's right. so loud. Yeah, right back. And why do I want? Yeah. 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 I feel like I have so much power right now. <laughs> <laughs> but you're right, it's kind of broken. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What happened? I feel too strong. Yeah, you're too strong. Now, why does smoke come out of it? Fucking shit, yeah. 
That shit could be a gun, bro. <laughs> I feel like I got so much power. <laughs> Three, two, one. Sixty-two. Yeah, she. Uh, <laughs> oh my god. That's what I'm saying. I'm telling. That might have been the best first take so far, cause holy shit! <laughs> Listen, I absolutely <laughs> shit myself. So what's always interesting about the jerseys every year is exactly within what parameters the teams are allowed to design their stuff. A few years ago, they were all just so cookie cutter, it was actually a joke. MW19 was such a joke of a season when all of the team jerseys were identical with just a different brand on them. It was honestly atrocious. Over the last couple of years, the teams have been able to design their own stuff. Now, this is what the Optic Boys ran at the World Cup. They also had like the orange version of this, if you guys remember, but um, this was the World Cup design. Now at the World Cup, let's not forget, they represented Optic Gaming rather than Optic Texas. So they had an Optic Gaming jersey on rather than an Optic Texas jersey. But um, yeah, this is what they're rocking with there. And of course, notably, this was the 100 Thieves jersey, right? So not Los Angeles Thieves, they rocked this, which I thought was really fire, honestly. It was um, kind of like a Real Madrid jersey, really. But uh, this was a 100T jersey that came out for the event. Now they won't be able to run this for the regular season, but um, this is is the debate, isn't it? That for the World Cup, the team's got to run some really interesting ideas. Whereas for the actual CDL season, it seems as if the restrictions on what they can design is, you know, more substantial. Now, to be fair, Cloud9s looks like this, right? They confirmed this a little while ago. They've got the blues, they've got the whites and whatever. So, um, I mean, look, I think they've done a pretty nice job with this one. We saw this confirmed a little while ago now, what the Cloud9 jersey is going to be looking like for the new season. So it does seem like there is more flexibility in what the teams can do this year. But, um, you know, in the Optic one, it, it's pretty nice. I mean, I wouldn't just say, I guess from my eye, it's not anything special. It's, again, black with a bit of the Optic green on there, the Optic Texas logo in the middle. I do like the numbers on the back, but um, yeah, this is what's going on anyway. Yeah, the Optic Boy is getting ready for the upcoming season, of course. Very much on Twitter your thoughts on all of this stuff in the comments section below, as always, and um, yeah, check out the full video on Kenny's YouTube channel. I can link to it in the description. You guys can click on the link, but actually, just a quick little YouTube thing. It's actually better for Kenny's video and the performance of it if you search for his channel and then you go and click on the video from there because if you click through a link to a YouTube video, YouTube has no idea what the click-through rate of that is. So it can't count that view towards the algorithm. Whereas if you search for a channel and then you click on a video, then YouTube knows, oh wow, this guy, like they clicked on it with a high percentage of all the people that saw the thumbnail and then they watched for this amount of time. Whereas clicking from a link, YouTube doesn't really know what to do with it and therefore it doesn't actually boost the performance of the video so um anyway just i don't know why i said that but you know what i'm saying and this was just another angle and screenshot of that jersey as well just one quick final thing it seems like this uh well esports rivals website has started up esportsrivals.com the intention it seems to be is Game Battles 2.0, right? Since Game Battles has shut down some sort of UI to make that work. And um, it seems like, I've looked at it a little bit, it seems like it should be pretty damn good. And basically a Game Battles clone. And with any luck, this will stay and become more populated. And we can get back to where we were as a scene a few years ago. But very much interested in your thoughts in the comments below. Zoom out on this one. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Take care. And I'll see you next time.